Africa as you've never seen it before. For the first time, a unique camera and trained observers reveal a new world. Their images may change your view forever. This is the picture you're used to seeing, a herd of wildebeest on the move across the vast, untamed wilderness of the Serengeti. And this, the animal portrayed as the noble king of the beasts, along with his fellow hunting experts, supposedly lording it over their domain. While the laughing hyena normally gets a bad press as a sneaky scavenger, an ugly coward. Usually two humans are kept out of the shot, yet the presence of the Maasai and of their cattle affects the whole balance of nature in this area. Now the most sensitive low-light camera in the world shows you truer images. While the Maasai enjoy the warmth of their hut, outside the electronic eye at last turns night into day. In the pitch black, unexpected scenes challenge conventional expectations. The Serengeti is a complex system of natural relationships, home to half a million Thompson's gazelle, a quarter of a million zebra, and more than a million wildebeest. The wildebeest are the stars of the spectacular migrations as they follow the rains to lush grasslands. This is the greatest concentration of game in all Africa. numbers attract the top predators, 3,000 lions in numerous prides. But by day, contrary to what most films show, the big cats are not a serious threat to the herds. Good eyesight and safety in numbers protect the wildebeest. This lion certainly acts like a natural killer. By contrast, the hyenas are just hanging about. In fact, he didn't make the kill. He stole it from more skillful hunters. The blood on their faces proves just who did make the kill. All too often, hyenas are portrayed as light-fingered latecomers. Yet, while the hyenas were feeding, the Prince of Thieves appeared. This is the bit most wildlife films leave out. Lions pinch the hyenas' prey. Far from scavenging for a living, nine times out of ten, hyenas make the kill. At first sight, the lion and the hyena are locked in a struggle for the same prey. How can the hyenas make a living here at all? Until now, the only images come from filming by day. But lions and hyenas hunt most of their food in the dark. The balance of power is about to shift for everyone here. Serengeti straddles the border between Kenya and Tanzania. But the Serengeti plains stretch far beyond the park boundaries, and to the east live the Maasai with their cattle. At dusk, they retire with their herds to the safety of their villages, or bomas. A wall of thorns keeps thieves and attackers away from their cattle and huts. 
The Maasai rarely venture out at night, except in force. Empty by day, the grazing land suddenly looks rather full, and these cats are not here for a nap. This is the only camera capable of recording what now happens. Technology also allows researchers to make a call to the animals themselves. Tom Maddox is counting predators in the Serengeti. He too thought the Maasai land was empty of lions and hyenas, as they're never seen by day. But Tom soon got a shock. Now he prefers to make his observations from the safety of his Land Rover. We use this technique that we call call-ins, and we basically have a tape of hyenas on a wildebeest kill. And when hyenas want to kill, they make these whooping noises and these fighting noises. There's also a lion on the tape, and it's fighting with the hyenas, and there's all this big commotion over this kill. And we play this tape on speakers on top of the car, and because lions and hyenas both rely on scavenging quite a lot in their diet, when they hear this tape, a lot of them will come in and they'll investigate it, thinking they're going to get a free meal. It was amazing where they come from. They just kind of melt out from the bushes in places you'd never have imagined a lion could have hidden, often quite close to where I was doing the call-in. And then it was equally amazing once the call-in's over, once they decide to go back undercover, usually about the time that the Maasai are starting to come out of the bomas around 7 o'clock, Again, the lines will melt straight back into the bushes. One minute the line's there, the next minute it's gone completely, and I know it must be sitting there somewhere, and they're so hard to find again. The ultra-sensitive camera is many times more powerful than Tom's military scope. Inside the Serengeti, you can drive around and you can see hyenas and lions. They're very obvious throughout the day. Um, outside the national park, that doesn't happen. You can drive around for days and days and not see any. The fact that there are any lions at all on the Maasai's land is surprising. So far, um, I'm finding an extremely high number of lions outside the park. In fact, it's comparable to certain areas within the park. So lions are actually doing extremely well in an area where people are living and working and grazing their cattle, which to me was extremely surprising. Hyenas are also um, extremely common. Compared to inside the park, there were fewer, but there are still a sizable number thriving outside the park, and you will actually see them when you drive around in the evening. The hyenas are usually pretty visible. No wonder the Maasai report meeting wild animals frequently, even by day. Another worker on the night shift is Paula White. She's interested in studying hyenas in this different world to learn how they and the lions carve up each other's catches. And like her quarry, she follows her ears. I'm going out to see if I can find some hyena kills, take a look at how many clan members are on the kills and whether or not there's any clashes going on. I'll also be looking for lion-hyena interactions because I'm really interested in, in how the two species interact down here with all the game present, whether or not they are still more likely to steal each other's kills or whether they're more likely to go after a new animal of their own. So what I'd be doing is driving the roads looking for action and then I'd stop once in a while and listen for sounds of kills, listen for any animals whooping. Sounds travel much further in the cool night air. On a still night, hyenas can hear whooping over 10 kilometers away. I think lions too are attracted to that sound and a number of other groans and squeals that usually accompany a hyena kill. It's a really exciting scene. There's a hyena running in front of me on the road right now. And the way he's running, I imagine he's going for a kill, so I'm going to stop and listen right now. What Paula and Tom are seeing leads them to rethink the conventional ideas about hyenas and lions at night and day. 
The Serengeti's two top predators both hunt zebra, wildebeest and gazelle. It's a mystery how they survive when they appear to compete for the same prey. Usually in nature, two competitors can't share the same food supply. There simply isn't enough for them both. Yet they both thrive. And although lions and hyenas share the same diet, the two animals are very different. The one thing they have in common is that their societies revolve around the females. Among cats, lions are unique in the way they live together. Most cats are solitary. Lions form small groups, prides. At the heart of each pride are relations, sisters, cousins and aunts. Strange lionesses and their cubs will be attacked. They cooperate to raise cubs. Lionesses will even suckle cubs of other pride members. In a lion pride, any female leader will have earned her place, unlike hyenas where leadership is largely inherited. At times, the males are absent, at others, they hang out with the females. At times, they're peaceable, even tender. At others, aggressive to all. In spite of their smaller size, lionesses not only retaliate, they may even pick fights with the males. However, male lions are physically more powerful. In a test of strength over a kill, the female will come off worse. Spotted hyenas live in large clans, averaging 50 or more members. But the whole clan is not always together. Individuals and small hunting groups spread out over the plains in a living net. In the Serengeti, hyenas usually make dens in abandoned burrows. Here the cubs are easily hidden from lions and other predators. Litters are small, only one or two. Hyena society is maintained by the rank that each animal inherits. If mum is high ranking, they'll be high ranking too, provided they've inherited her strength as well. Females may fight females, but males hardly ever fight amongst themselves and certainly wouldn't dare attack a female. Clan life is ruled by the females, who are almost a quarter bigger than the males. The cubs fight in their first days of life, but once they know their place, they're far more likely to play together than to scrap. The males can behave as best friends, even if they're members of different clans. Hyena's behavior is highly complex. From weaning to fighting, much of what hyenas do still remains to be studied by scientists. Nonetheless, the most marked difference between hyenas and lions is in how they hunt. All animals built for the kill hunt in the same basic sequence. They begin 
by finding their victims. Next, they single out a target by scanning the herd. Later will come the approach, then the contact, finally the meal. How they hunt differs sharply between hyena and lion. The hyenas get as close as 20 meters in full view of their prey before the herd wheels and flees. The hyenas will try to scatter the wildebeest before singling one out. The Maasai call the hyenas doctors because they can recognize the sick and the weak. They run down their prey like wolves. Hyenas are endurance hunters. Chases can last up to five kilometers at full speed. Lions can't sustain this. They are sprinters. After the rainy season, much of the Serengeti National Park is a sea of long grass. The lions use it to mask their presence. They approach unseen by careful stalking or occasionally by lying in ambush. Outside the park, where the Maasai graze their cattle, the grass is shorter. Any predator risks a confrontation with armed herdsmen. The lion sticks out. Not much chance of an ambush here. Hunting under cover of night makes more sense. As the sun goes down, life gets easier for the Serengeti's predators. Dusk diminishes to near complete darkness, which can continue all night if there are storm clouds or if it's a moonless night. The only camera on the planet powerful enough to see in total blackness even picks up stars invisible to human eyes. Suddenly, the landscape is illuminated as if by searchlight. Even so, humans can still only just pick out shapes. But to the grazing animals, it's as clear as day. The camera reveals crouching lions invisible to the naked human eye. A night ambush could prove more successful. These two lionesses have detected a herd of wildebeest crossing a track. When the moon is up, the lions are limited to the techniques they use by day, stalking and ambushing. But it won't always be so light. The pair near the crossing point and squat down, well screened by vegetation. One crawls into position to jump a victim. A quick dash and it's soon over. Although these lionesses have been successful, the moonlit night is really the best time for hyenas to hunt. The cool of the night air allows them to keep on running, something the easily tired lions cannot do.
hyena's behavior at night is something scientists are increasingly able to observe for themselves. I think I can hear a kill off in the distance. So I'm going to go in that direction. And it sounds like there's lions coming in as well. Paula White's night vision goggles work because they and the camera see in the special infrared headlights of her Land Rover. I think the ability to use this sort of invisible light to observe animals, nocturnal animals, um, in their natural environment is, is really quite a breakthrough for research. Certainly I didn't begin to see the full range of hyena behaviors and still I, until I started coming out at night and using this sort of special equipment. It was very frustrating to me otherwise because as dusk was falling and my own ability to, to observe them was you know, ending, I knew that the hyenas were just beginning to wake up and just beginning to, you know, start their day as it were, uh, but I was left out of it. So now, as I'm able to follow them and observe them, I'm seeing things that I've never been able to see before. Now Paula can see in the dark, but it's her hearing that guides her. You often hear hyenas whooping at night, and that can mean any number of things. They're advertising their own location, they're trying to find clan, other clan members. But the one sound that you really associate with a kill is a giggle. And actually, that's where the term laughing hyena came from. But that's the sound that I really associate with kills. And it's a thing that other hyenas and lions hone in on as well. So really, driving around like this at night, using this uh, enhanced vision and listening for kills, I'm behaving very much like a hyena, and there's one right now. I can see it going through the grassland. A hyena's jaws are among the most powerful of any animal species. The sharp front teeth shear through skin and meat. Their jaw muscles are as big as a man's arm. At the back of the hyena's mouth, huge crushing teeth are strong enough to crunch up solid bone. Yet, it's a remarkably peaceful scene. Male hyenas are nature's gentlemen when it comes to sharing a kill with their clan. Although the hyenas gulp down their meal, lions arrive in time to take the food from their mouths. The camera unveils a night world full of animal life. Just how close these animals come to humans astonishes the researchers. I found a cheetah quite late in the evening. Sometimes the, the male cheetahs will stay active quite a long time into the night. And so I was following him. It, it went past dark. It was about half past seven, eight o'clock in the evening. And he was walking straight up the road, straight towards a Maasai village. And I thought this was going to be fantastic. I was going to see how close cheetahs would get to uh, Maasai villages. And suddenly he went leaping off the road. Um, onto the road stepped four lions. I then carried on following them instead. And they went almost within sight of the, the village. The village was, was just over the next hill. Lions will even break into Maasai villages in an attempt to reach the cattle inside. The Maasai mount a defense, but it's dangerous. The balance of power has switched. The nocturnal hunters are in their element. There are burglars about. 
The guard dog is aware of the hyena, but the Maasai will register its shape only dimly. <laughs> the men must rely on tracks to point them in the right direction. During the attack, a cow was killed and dragged off. The following morning, the Maasai inspect the corpse. They can easily identify the cause of death. Ringing the neck are distinctive punctures, the suffocating bite of a lion. The culprit also mauled a warrior. The wounds could quickly become infected. The tribal doctor cleans the site thoroughly, without anaesthetic. The Maasai prize suffering without complaint above all. The lion's assault will trigger a deadly surge. Maasai warriors respond to the alarm. The young unmarried men gather. This is what they've been training for for years. It's the supreme test of their stamina and self-control and a test of their ability to bear pain without flinching. This is what they've been waiting for, for just such a chase. Success will give them a passport to adulthood, the chance to find a good wife. Failure will mark them for the rest of their lives. But before they can take part, they need to demonstrate their fitness. The elders will decide who will and won't go. The warrior group arrives at the settlement where the cow is taken. Each warrior wields a long-bladed spear. They are also armed with short double-edged swords and lethal clubs. They are all experts in the use of these weapons against animals as well as people. In many areas the warriors are now outlaws, but in this part of the Serengeti their ceremonies are tolerated. Lion hunting by the Maasai is illegal, but these warriors are so far from the towns they are generally allowed to continue. A day of ritual begins with chanting and dancing to hypnotic rhythms. Warriors demonstrate their strength and agility by leaping. Fueled by intoxicating herbal drinks, they dance into the night. More warriors arrive from further afield, eager to be selected. Everyone is in a frenzy of anticipation. Ole Lembikas, a village elder, addresses the warriors. He sobers them by reminding them of the dangers ahead. He tells them to work together, to trust each other, and to return safely. Then he urges them to enjoy the party. It could be their last.
In the morning, two hunts unfold far apart. A lone lioness spies out a water hole. Animal or human, hunters face mortal danger in the coming hours. For lions, daytime hunts are the most difficult. For filmmakers, this is when it's easiest to film. So this is the image that's so often repeated. Prey unaware of the lioness hidden in the grass. The hunters head for the place where a lioness was seen recently. The one they believe killed the cow. The herds are busy drinking. Zebras have keen sight. Their bulging eyes give a wide-angle view of danger. Lions hate and fear Maasai. The bells around the warrior's ankles make it clear to any lions they're coming. The lions on Maasai land will always hide in deep cover. The warriors must flush the beast out into the open. Then they have a chance to tire it out before they come in with their spears. The lioness edges closer. The warrior's search may last all day, covering up to 40 kilometers. The lioness's prey is within 30 meters. They think it's all over. The warriors head back empty-handed. The lioness returns to collect the cub she left earlier. She hid it in long grass nearby, but the chaos of her hunt has attracted members of another pride. This is their patch and they'll defend it. The mother calls to the youngster. Two other lionesses reach the cub first. 
they won't tolerate another female's offspring, they'll eliminate it. This is not about hunger. The corpse is left to the vultures and hyenas. The mother's life too is under threat. She's no relation. The pride will kill her if she stays. Outnumbered, without a territory of her own, she heads yet further away from the park. When lions roam, they are at risk, and so are their pursuers. What you're about to see has never been shown before. A tourist's camera videos the end of a hunt. A lion is cornered. There seems no way out. A warrior throws a spear. The tables are truly turned. Teeth and claws strike home. The wounded warrior continues, believing the lioness chose him as the weakest. To overcome his shame, he needs to finish her off. But even warrior pride cannot prevent the injured man collapsing into shock. Meanwhile, the lioness dies of her wounds. She's wearing a radio collar, a park lion. Two different worlds clash. The Maasai collect a trophy, the scientists collect data. Each sees the lion in a different light. It's, it's not a, a romantic, we like to live with wildlife kind of situation, but they never do something to the extent that if, if, a, if a lion is being a problem, they don't go out and try and kill every single lion that they can find in the entire area. I have great respect for them for, for tolerating them to, to such a great degree. In truth, the warriors have made a lethal mistake. The wrong lion has paid the price, and the outcome is nearly fatal for one Maasai. Were he to die on the spot, they would give him a warrior's rights and leave his bones to the night and the hyenas. Night is the time of the four-footed hunters. Most hours are clouded over or feebly lit by faint stars. On moonless nights, the Maasai only leave the safety of their bomas in groups. But there is no safety in numbers now for the grazers of the plains. The darkest hours of the night see restless action. Animal hunters are about in numbers never seen during the day. Spooked, the herds of wildebeest, zebra and gazelle burst into panicky runs. They fear lions and hyenas are nearby, but only the camera can see them. Not only the zebra are uneasy, a clan of hyenas is also on edge. They've made a kill in another clan's territory. It isn't long before one of the owners claims his rights. He calls for support from the other residents. He 
his clan bustles in to drive the invaders away. They bolt the meat while they can. Other threats may arrive to challenge them in turn. They remain watchful. This is truly fast food. The invaders will be back to recapture their meat. You can see this clearly in infrared light. But how do the animals see in these conditions? Like all the animals here, their eyes appear to glow. A mirror-like membrane doubles the available light. Then their brains enhance the images, filling in the gaps to see detail more clearly. The newcomers soon return in force. The prize seesaws between them until it's all gone. But with so little light, even their superb night vision is challenged. This is as close as you can get to seeing through their eyes. It gives an idea of how they can operate in this dark world. The lions and hyenas continue their battles, as if unhindered by the darkness. Once again, the lions have stolen the hyenas' kill, but they all appear to be able to see exactly what's going on. And when the lions go hunting, they do so just as they are. They wander off in the general direction of the sound of herds of animals. To the lions, the herds are almost invisible at any distance, just dull grey smears. But they can locate the grazers easily by sound and smell. Night is the only time that lions can approach undetected here on the short grass plains. You are about to see for the first time how and when the lions of the Serengeti catch most of their food. A Tommy dips his head to see whether or not he can see danger silhouetted against the sky. The circling lion is almost invisible. Bathed in infrared light, it stands out. Another Tommy can hear something and is off. The lion's game plan is always the same. Get close to the herds, then spread out. They don't need to make any effort to hide themselves. Only their footfalls give them away. And because they're unseen, lions are no longer at a disadvantage as they approach their quarry. Two young males take a small zebra with ease. A lioness gives chase. A high kick lets her quarry escape. Soon, two lions bring down a fine stallion. Sabre-sharp teeth and meat-hook claws bury themselves into 300 kilos of struggle.
One lion grips the throat in a stranglehold, the other prepares to feed. Their ability to keep a grip on their prey in pitch darkness makes the kill possible. Everything the camera has disclosed comes together. The apparent competitors for the same food survive because there are times when one is more successful than the other. The animals hunt in different ways, by day and by night, and in differing light. These unique images show that the relationship between lions and hyenas is more complex than traditional pictures allow. The lions steal kills, and the so-called cowardly hyenas are often merely out to reclaim their prey. Don't say you've never seen a brave hyena. A thieving male lion is forced to take them on. The hyenas persist even though a single blow could be fatal. This frequent nighttime behavior has never been recorded before. There's much more going on in the dark than people have realized. And there must be many more secrets still to be revealed. At dawn, the Maasai dismantle the thorns barricading the entries to their bomas. No lions or hyenas are to be seen outside. The killing fields of the night are transformed into places where cattle may safely graze. By day, everything is in the Maasai's favor. The cool of night and the light of the moon are ideal conditions for the hyena, a long-distance runner. But the darkest nights belong to lions, which can rely on built-in weapons and brute force. The truer picture that has emerged applies by day as well. Hyenas can kill when lions are too conspicuous, and it's the lions that are the scavengers. In the end, they don't so much compete as coexist, hunting in different ways and at different times. In the centuries that the Maasai have dwelt on the plains, they too have found a way of treading lightly on the land. Now, droughts and overpopulation bring challenges to their old ways. Within a decade, this cattle pasture will be covered with crops. Predators and herds will be gone, only preserved in the zoo-like national park. The warriors will step back into history, their culture bartered for bit parts in conservation and tourism. If the Maasai have a vital lesson to teach, it is that lions give meaning and purpose to their lives, worthy adversaries for warriors. Their spears are already being beaten into plowshares. A patchwork of fields is appearing. Soon, fences will spring up. Nature's carefully crafted balance of power will be upset, animals and people in conflict. The picture that emerges may be starker, but it is more realistic. And never again will you be taken in by that well-groomed